come from, how you pronounce these things. I know when I first used to go out into it, it <coughs> calls great hilarity in the pub when I talk about Berkshire. If any first come from Berkshire, <laughs> you see what I mean. Um, mind you, I couldn't understand what they thought was funny because they spoke in such a weird dialect <laughs> at the time. Yeah. Right, mention. Uh, ancient sign, been going a long time on and off. Um, certainly was very active in the back end of the 19th century. Um, one of the few signs that were active when collectors were still out. Right? And if you read Sharp's notebook, um, publications, you realise there was actually a, an active sign, but he got together the old and basically retired dancers becoming dance for him. But not only was the active sign going out at the time, but there actually were the boys, effectively boys, a number of boys who were actually dancing with them. And after the First World War, it was some of the middle and junior sides that were who formed the team. The team used to go at that stage with a, a jazz band, that's a kazoo in Watson type jazz band, you know, not a, a sort of uh, traditional jazz band. Uh, um, from our, um, they worked terribly well received apparently, they went out and collected money for charity and things like that, they were trying to And so about 1930 they gave up and sold their smocks, or most of their smocks. Now the smocks, as on the painting and so on, I mean there's a painting of the full sort of thing, the jacket length smocks, the normal size smock in other words. Uh, anybody who thinks of shepherd's smocks down to the knees, if you've actually been sitting up on the bridgeway on a night <coughs> that we've had recently, looking after your sheep at this time of year, you understand why you have a thick, heavy, all enveloping marquee to wear. <laughs> But when you're actually grabbing out or sweeping out the stockyard and dealing with uh, all the droppings and things like this, the last thing you want is a building thing in front of you, which is picking up its shit here as well. Right? So the jacket length stock is what we're talking about. Well, um, about in 1937, for the, um, about the time of the coronation, they had to persuade by the lady at the, the main house in the area who actually it was an ex-concert pianist, which makes a change from an actress, I suppose. And so uh, she encouraged them to get out, and they danced in the um, town and area, and they got going again at that stage. The Morris world ran across them by, quite by accident. They, um, at the ring meeting at Wargrave in 1936, they, Kimber was there, and Jiggy was there, and they have all the ring meetings, they spend the morning actually learning what they're going to do in the afternoon, you know, and then go out and do it. But sometimes we should have ring meetings today, they still do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but they went out, and one of the stops within really Adam in the Burry, in the centre of the town, and the local coal merchant and his son turned up to their coal car, got off, got quite excited for what was going on, and uh, he met his old friend, they met their old friend Jiggy Wells. So Jinky Wells and uh, Henry um, Hemmings proceeded to do a double jig. Now that's quite amusing because the jig that um, uh, Jinky was doing was Flowers of Edward, you know, the kneeling dance, that they claim his fiddle for, I might say. Um, and uh, yeah, the Hemmings actually wasn't the Morris dancer at all, just step dancer. So one didn't cut some post, and the other one did say for being stepping. Uh, but, um, and they also, and I said, I know it's true because I not only got a bit of um, Lionel Baker's silly film of it, but I also got a, a print of Major Fry's still photographs of the event, who you can see taking these pictures in Lionel Baker's film. Yeah, <laughs> 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 two views of the same thing. But as we told them that, Penwood the stroke or somebody else talked to them and went over the following day to talk to them, met Tom. And uh, met a number of them started talking about the Abingdon, Morris, and so on. And they were told, ah, you know, there were dancers over Edge as well. So they established a contact over there, went over to see some of the people. This was at, say, 1936, at this stage of no Morris and Abingdon or Edge was going. The following year, 
the Morris Room was surprised to discover that in fact the Avenue Morris had actually downstate and Ensham had downstate. Now Ensham, I told you, had sold its smocks, hadn't got any costume at all, so they went to a, a government surface store, store, as it were, and bought the stuff, can't be shaved, was done sort of boy skate type hats, and uh, sort of turned the sign up, made sort of hand type hat, and so on. Um, didn't have a musician, so a man played the maple all the song, and then there was a maple. Now, in this sort of period, Major Fryer, who was a sort of, is it where the contact of the Morris world, the revival Morris world was there, went to see them and help them as, you know, when I say help them, you know, help them sort of do business sort of sense, engage and so on, as far as possible. And um, he left a notebook of the, you know, he used to scribble down the notation, whatever they did. <coughs> so, for the first couple of years, I got an idea of what dance they did. Um, in that time, they sort of tended to, tended to do a dance, the mum was played, and then another dance. Um, and the dancers were essentially, they never did the same thing twice, right? Um, in a sense, it didn't repeat, they were always making small changes. It was a stack of figures from which they, they drew from. Right? This uh, team was going all right. Um, it was drawn for two pounds, the Russells and the Lambourns. Um, they had one of the old, old men, the, the sharper men, William Russell, um, and so on, he would at that time. But, as always with these sides, the young men thought, you know, you're all part of it, it's democratic, they can do it. And they start to try and speed the dancers up somewhat. And then they had an argument about how the arm movement, that's what Sid Russell used to say, you know, he used to argue about arm movements. And in the end, they had a meeting, and the compromise was, you could do anything you like, as long as it was different. <laughs> uh, you know, so the, the sort of 38, 39 city girl showed the team dancing, not together, you know, the arms were all over the place. You know. uh, now I've tried to make workshops, and actually, when you do that, you say to people, do some do this, some do this, you know, debating that. You'd be surprised how like the original it looks. <laughs> um, and quite exciting, like the original, that's the point of it. Now, Douglas Kennedy, the Kennedy family were actually travelling uh, up to Stratford, up the main road, and they were travelling through Woodstock, and there was Asian dancing, and they stopped to see them. And Douglas's comment, uh, at least to me, was that at the time they saw them, and, and so they were immediately transported to where he saw them with Sharp in 1912. And he said, the way they danced brought back all the memories of the way he saw them before. And he, he then said, well, of course, Mr. Sharp had published an article in which he could never understand because it didn't actually have any connection with the way Engelman actually danced, you know, the way he remembers seeing the dancing. And there was the British side again doing it like that. The war sort of killed, not exactly killed the side, it stopped the dancing. After the war, um, there was a Morris competition for schools in Oxford because Abingdon, Headington, and Engelman all entered the school children's. <coughs> Team in it, and that I'm, I'm aware of. Uh, Major Fryer told me of that. And then there were numerous of the, numerous attempts to actually get the Morris going again, because certainly Sid Russell was quite keen for the Morris to go. You know, but somehow it never got a lift off. There was never somebody in the village who actually would form the league until the prison lock going, which saw it 1980. Yeah, 1980. Yeah, 1980-ish. You know. Um, now there's a vast difference here. in. 6061, I had this for Fry, I had this list of all the, the dancers of the 30s, and I just went to try and see them. You we know, got to see Sid Russell a number of times and his brothers, but they were all working people, I suppose in their 50s at that time, and there's an interesting phenomenon I've discovered exactly. When people have stopped for 20 years or 30 years of you know, dancing, but they're still very active in their life, involved in their life. They don't really remember. You know, they can't get their mind focused on 25 years back. Uh, and I didn't get a great, I've got some doubts in place. I've got a, a concert, you know, I've got uh, some other things. I'm, I'm glad that there were some other dancers around. Um, when the side revived the village, these same people, you know, and they retired, as it were, 
and you can actually get them to concentrate. And the oddest one was Phil Lamborn, who, when I went there, they all said, don't bother with Phil, he didn't know the dancers then. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he won't tell you anything, and I can assure you, when I spoke to him at the time, uh, um, he sort of, what was that? Uh, oh yeah, you know, sort of, uh, it's never a part of his interest. So, of course, you know, with the revival, he became a sort of key master. So, the way I understand it from each side of the revival is that Yes, there was a flexibility at the dance, which the current side had to standardise for somebody. But that in fact different people had different ideas of what figures they liked. So that you get a figure from so and so, and they might do that dance with that figure when he was in the side of the week and, and things of that sort. But they've stylized it and rationalised it. Now, for those of actually had anyone noticed before, what was based on the 1980-82 period of dancing. Um, there was a fair drift in the dance in those days, and in the last 10 years, there's been much more rationalisation of it. So that where each dance was significantly different, you now things like there were dances where back to back was each way, you know, all the back to back, their shoulders twice, and things of that sort, been somewhat rationalised. But the spirit's still there. So, right, let's all get down to it. The basic step, right? Now you have to imagine because nobody is, that you're wearing fairly heavy boots, right? Hobnail boots are ridiculous because you find that when you start flinging your feet away around, the hobnails, you know, the heavy weight takes complete control of the body, and after a while it starts to ache and things like this. So what I want you to do is go, like you've got a good boot around your foot.
friends. We decided that's probably a better right. I was hoping there was some sort of letter, you know. <laughs> the, another point is that in doing that, there's, you know, there's a certain day with it because in, in doing the day and so on, a bit of bend of the body into it. Not driving yourself into the grave, no, but there's a sort of error that comes in. I think it comes from these heavy groups too. I'm proud of you, right? So let's have a bit more. Not 
typical or average or anything like that. Best. We spent the Southern Times he was right and occasionally he was wrong in the sense of portraying what the tradition was actually like. But then ancient like most places, the tradition didn't care what the tradition was. Right. Um, so put up, put up, put down, put down, you turn out you can't halfway between these, and you have got to do that on the sort of follow the kick up and so on, right? They're corners and fours. You're in fours, are you? <laughs> Your next problem is that the first corner is what we call second corners. Yes. Right? Uh, from memory, I think the team was led by number two, what we would call number two. Not an unusual problem with the tradition, you know. Uh, again, one of those things the revival hasn't necessarily got everything right. Um, but I should call them second corners, because that's what we're used to, but they go first. <laughs> it's Sunday morning, what do you expect? <laughs> they do it back to back. They go forward, passing left. Oh, sorry, I didn't speak fast enough, did I? <laughs> All these things you start with left shoulder passing, the opposite way to what you're normally expecting. Right. Two across, two to the side, two back. And then break. Everybody does the break. One, two, three, kick up. Then the other corner, first corner, does it second. Let's go. And back. You must go all the way across the opposite corners of the So can we get that far through the music?
so we don't just start off by singing, we start with a double foot up, right? And then we do a double back to back to the shoulders. We can do that as I call it at the time. The clever bit, which is a set of six I can identify. Here's a set of six I can identify. <laughs> A diagonal set of six, not by the traditional way of uh, being, well, I suppose it's just way. You join this team like that. Right? And then we dance to that position. You are number six, I don't know, that's what it is. Dance to that position. Um, one, two, four. That's why you have to do it. Look this one. The map doesn't look clear enough to write that. And then you dance, pass, cross over, pass each other, left shoulders, of course, right? And turn to face front in your original column. Crunch on the other diagonal. 
position, go to twist the body, and this particular dance, in this particular figure, you do a big to 40 degree turn in doing this double set. So we'll have the music, and we will try getting through the special figure. Would you go?
trying to retype it on my word processor, I actually got the numbers not in the wrong, well, they're in the right relative place, but they indicated the wrong thing, and I fell into <laughs> the hole that I'd done for myself. But uh, can I have just this set? The rest of you move back a bit. Come into the middle. When we form up on this diagonal and the second corner approaches, right? In other words, if we do that, these, this one and that one, right, are really where number one was and number six. Right? So when we come to the cross through, right, they're not actually going to go anywhere. Just the set would be a bit spread down a bit, right? But okay. you cross through and line up on. No, 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 you're not going in. You're not going You go through that, right? So, that in fact, they haven't actually gone anywhere, right? So now, the next time we go, they approach like that, you see. And now, you don't move and you don't move. You're actually, so you go through, you lock, you can't go through, right? And you're like that. It produces the same effect, right? But I'm afraid I was trying to be clever, and I actually, you know, I put the numbers in the right relative position, but in the wrong place relative to the other set. And I was trying to actually teach you what that said, and that doesn't make sense. Right? I do apologise for that. It's not often that I'm wrong, and it's even less often that I apologise for it. But that would do, will you? Right. That's the engine poacher. Now, when you get yourself a stick, the one is the engine stick dancers. The other two are standard hardcore stick dancers, so we won't do those. But it's all written down here. Don't forget everything else. Right. Right. Thank <laughs> you. 
this is one of my great sessions. It really is. I can remember this from my dying day. Sets of eight. <laughs>
tricks to be staggered. Back to back in the middle, 
others approach, rain the eight sides, progress on, replace as soon as they clear you, as it were, and we are ready, into line, back over, and they got back to place, having visited the four corners. Right, and there is the trigger. You write middle of our board. <laughs> then we all face down, we dance into a nine or six down, and uh, cast back and so on, right? So, in a nine or six to start with facing up, from the beginning, much to your amazement, we'll discover what I've forgotten to tell you. <laughs>
one, two, three up, one, two, three up, one, two, three up, step and jump into the middle. Right, that's what we do next. Can I have a watch just after that?
So they did their final dance to their closing dance without any music. And the audience spontaneously broke into the aria for Mark to pass. So when they got to the last bit, they were right crying, yeah.
was actually considered by many to do with the Sherborne Duke. Now, the Sherborne, Lord Sherborne, and my Lord of Sherborne Duke, as it was known in one place, um, the Sherborne um, <coughs> title is not that ancient, you know, although they did in the area and so on. So it may only have been called my Lord of Sherborne Duke only in the one place. Hedington, the tomb was known as Shepherd's Heel and Toe. You know, now that could be uh, Sherpon Heel Toe heard badly over in Oxford or something of that sort. But the tomb seemed to be the four collective version of the tomb, the knowledge of it um, in a number of places, and it has this strange Galliard type rhythm, a six beat sequence. So, how you have to do that is to extend. Your normal slow cage to suit. The purpose of this exercise is actually you hear a tune, you hear its rhythm, and without any instruction about what actually to do on you to adjust, is it your, your jig to this particular bit of music? And if you don't have a jig, it is yours from now on. So, <laughs> it's, it's in your bundle of sheets, uh, a sheet on this, so don't you have no excuse to say I don't know anything about this. Let's try once to sell.
They call it a cast, or called it a cast. I say called because they haven't actually danced for 10 years or more. Right? It's rather like the engine cast. You go down the outside, top, and those come up the middle. And then you go down the outside, right to the bottom. No, 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 backwards. backwards. You go backwards there, and you come up the middle, one steady flowing motion. All the way around. Keep flowing around until you get back to close. Did you overtake? You've got seven double steps to get all the way around, ending with a step and a jump. Right, Shepherd's Hair again.
C-man shoulder this as well. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, four, five. Can do that twice? Is that? Is that? Is that? Is that? Is that? Is that? Is that?
Nothing, not the music. <laughs> the music gets double speed when I say so. Oh no. Right, why don't you self double clapping? Oh. Set down a bag of juice. 
So sets of six with handkerchiefs. Well, that's, that's where the chaps do it.
again. Slightly different tune. This time we might get the slows right. It didn't come as a surprise. <laughs>
flipping, and it's all right to left sticking. Right, three to four back, right to left sticking. When you're opposite sticking, right? Yeah. Right, that's the chorus. The fingers are cross over and stick, cross back and stick. Right? Then the middle of four stick while the eight of four go all the way around the eight side. It's right now, right? And then the eight of four stick while the middle of cross over and go around the end. And then you repeat that. And then we process game and accumulate. Right, first couple, first to second, first to third. And then we will process up. When you get back, you stick. Rather, accumulate the sticking rather than the procession up. Right? We end on a course. Right! This is the 